The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome on this sixth Sunday after Trinity. And we continue through Luke's Gospel, following Jesus as he teaches those around him. Today we're reading from chapter 11, verse 1. Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And the friend answers from within, do not bother me, the door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, the most famous prayer of all time, certainly I would contend, we hear Jesus teaching his disciples today the Lord's Prayer. It also appears in the Gospel of Matthew, slightly different version, a slightly longer version in Matthew, the one that we more often use in church. But the meaning is the same. All those familiar phrases are there. Many of those phrases would have been familiar to the disciples as phrases that they used in Jewish prayer. But one or two of them aren't. And I think for today, it strikes me that word we translate father, that word Abba, my parent, my beloved parent. Of course, back then, father was the chief parent, the owning parent, because the mother was part of the father's estate. But it would have been unique for Jesus, a rabbi, to tell his disciples, pray with this familiar sort of a term. It's not quite daddy, Abba, it's not that babyish. It's not a childish term, but it is a diminutive. It is a term of affection. Abba, my father. And that is a break with tra tradition. The other phrases are ones that would likely have been familiar to those used to play, praying Jewish prayers. But for him to say, call God my beloved parent, the one who I am close to, the one who is close to me, that is quite something. Prior to that time, God was remote. God was great and up in the heavens and you can see how that works through the Old Testament, how God seems to be far away and 
speaks only through the occasional prophet and half of them don't seem to always get it right. It takes them a while to work out which one's right. And Jesus says, indeed, in the Sermon on the Mount, by their fruits will you know them. By the fruit will you know the right prophets. But, but that's a little bit of a, a side issue here because here he's teaching them to pray. But he doesn't just tell them what to say. He doesn't just tell them that God is close. God is close as a loving parent. In fact, God is so close that God's son is right there with them. But he also teaches them that you've got to be persistent. He tells them a parable of going to someone in the middle of the night. But he says, keep being persistent because of his persistence. He gets what he needs. He may not get what he wants, but he gets what he needs. And he says, keep praying, keep on praying, even if it's hard. In some ways, he's trying to prepare them for what's to come because, of course, they're on their way to Jerusalem and what's to come is not going to be easy. But keep praying, even through suffering, be persistent, be persistent in prayer and remember God is so close to you. He is like your parent. The Lord's Prayer, as I said, one of the most familiar prayers, one of the most famous prayers in the world, certainly for Christians. And my grandson, when he was with me on uh, Friday, was, pray was playing with well, I'll show you. This is a Lord's Prayer cube. And as you go through the cube, it tells you what the prayers are. This is the prayer Jesus taught. He is but little and he is simply fascinated with how it works. But I love the continuity of the way this cube works because you get back to where you started. And you can start again and you can pray if playing with this is a way of praying again and again. And it translates, hallowed be your name. We remember God is holy. One day I will be able to give him this. There is a lovely story told by one of the patriarchs of the Orthodox Church about the daughter of Karl Marx. Karl Marx, famously atheist, and she said to the patriarch, I found this little prayer in a book the other day, and I just really wish it could be true. And the patriarch said, well, what is the prayer? And she said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and so forth. And of course, he was able to say that that is the prayer. That is the prayer that Jesus taught us. That is the most powerful prayer of all. There are books that have been written about it. It is known as a prayer of fire. Pray this. Pray it persistently. Pray it in the hardest of circumstances. And we are not in easy circumstances now. We are in hard circumstances. In this country, we worry about what's happening with our government. We worry about what's happening with our climate. We worry about what's going on beyond our borders with wars and with famines and with the wider impacts of climate change. And that's just the ones that we're hearing about intermittently in our news. We each have our concerns for each other and for the world around us. And we are told to be persistent in prayer, to pray without ceasing, as St Paul said. So let us do that. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And Lord, we pray this prayer for ourselves, for those we love and for the world around us. Lord, we pray that you will be with each one of us. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and everyone you love, living and departed now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>